Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to go for a very simple one. We're going to be creating this glass text effect as a title effect for Final Cut 10. So there's quite a bit of fun you can have depending on the look you want here. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to make a new project. We're going to select Final Cut title, obviously. Um, duration of five seconds is probably quite good. That's a, a reasonable title duration. Frame rate doesn't matter. And I've chosen uh, 1920 1080. Let's open that up. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to drag the text element out into a new group like that. Come to the inspector, come to layout. We want to switch the layout method to type. Let's come back to format. Let's select center. Let's increase the size to something like 200. Let's come to properties. Let's reset everything. Uh, that size is probably a bit silly, isn't it? Let's go for 150. Okay, so next I want to be able to see what I'm doing as I'm building this. Uh, and I don't want to be using this title background. So what I'm going to do is into this group here, I'm going to import a an image that I can use just to give us an idea of, of what this is going to look like. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the text and make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. I'm going to drag that out into a new group up here. So with this clone layer selected, I'm going to come to Filters, Border, Simple Border. And then I'm going to set the width to a thousand. And that's created this black box that sits right on top of my text. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this group here and I'm going to come to Basic Motion Align 2 and I'm going to select the text layer as my source for that. And that means that as I move the text layer, the box moves along with it. So I'm going to just put it down there where we'll be able to see this a little bit better as we work. Okay, so then I'm going to take that clone layer. Let's call this one backing. And I'm going to duplicate it. So right click, duplicate. Uh, let's turn off the other one. Let's select the simple border filter and let's switch the border placement to outside and we're going to set the width to 50. And so what we've now got is our text on the inside. So if I turn off my original text, that looks like that. So we've got an element that's got text and border. So let's call this particular one, let's call it main instead of backing. Okay, we can turn off this group and indeed we can turn off our text layer. It's that or rather the group with our text layer in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our background group here and we're going to make a clone of it. So right click and make, make clone layer. And so now we're going to add a Gaussian blur to this. So blur, Gaussian blur. Let's set that value to 100. And then we're going to add an image mask to this layer. And we're going to choose our clone layer backing as the source. And you'll see, I think, that what we've got here now is this blurred box, and that's the start of our effect. So let's call that backing, and let's duplicate it. So right-click, duplicate, and let's call this main. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to use, for the image mask, we're going to use our other clone layer up here, the clone layer main. Drag that in there. So now I'm going to turn off the backing and you can see what we've got. So we've got our outline and our text and they're blurring the background. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to just add a color levels and this is to this top clone layer. And what I'm going to do is open up RGB and I'm going to bring the white in value down to around, I don't know, 70% like that. And you can see that sort of brightened that up and made it a little bit more legible. Now this is one of the elements that we're going to publish, so I actually might as well publish it while we're at it. Next thing we're going to do is we want to add some stippling to this. Actually, let's turn that backing off and you can see how that's working together. So we've got our two distinct areas there. 
Okay, so to create our stippled glass effect, like a sort of shower door, I'm going to come to the top of the project here and make a new group, object new group. I'm going to come to add object generators and I'm going to look for cellular. I'm going to turn the speed down to zero, the size all the way down to three. Open up the gradient and bring that white value down like that. Somewhere like that should do, that's around sort of 30%. And we can turn this group off. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add to our main layer, we're going to add distortion, glass distortion, and we're going to use that cellular as the input source for the glass distortion. So now you can see that we can control the amount of stippling we're getting on that glass makes it a little bit more glassy. So I'm going to set that amount to around 40, I think. And I'm also going to publish that. So let's publish that. And I'm going to copy that onto the backing as well. So drag that onto backing, holding down the Alt or Option key. We also want to publish that amount there. So what I might do is just reduce that down to 30. So we've got a little bit of differentiation there. And let's publish that as well. Let's come back and start tidying up our published elements. So project here, let's just call this Brighton. Let's call this bump main. And the other one we'll call bump backing. Let's also publish our blurs. So let's take the main one there and let's publish that blur amount. And the same with the other one, the backing blur. Publish that. And again, we just want to label those up properly. So blur main and blur backing. So another thing I'd like to do to finesse this look is to add a little bit of depth. So I'm going to select that main layer there and group it. So right click group. And then I'm going to come to filters, uh, look for stylize, extrude. Let's set the angle to, I don't know, 284, the distance to five, and let's set the back brightness down to zero. And let's the front brightness to one, I think. And you can see how that's just helped to give us a bit of depth there. You might not want that. So what we could do is we could just publish that mix value or, or even that distance value we could do, couldn't we? Let's do that, let's publish the distance value, right click publish and call that extrude. Now I'm just doing this the very quick way. In reality, the better way of doing this is to add these to a rig so that you can adjust the, the extent of, of these because obviously we don't want anybody to be doing that with the extrude. Five is probably going to be more than enough. It really wants to be quite subtle. Anyway. Let's move on. And there's one other thing we need to do. Obviously, we don't want this text to be sitting right up against the edge of the border. So to do this, we're going to have to get a little bit cunning. What we're going to do is going to come back to this group with the masks in it, which I've labeled up as masks. Let's turn that on so we can see what we've got. Now, I want to move the backing above the main, and then I'm going to come to the filter Select the color and make that 100% green. Make sure it's 100% green, there's none of the other two colors. And then I'm going to come to the color for the main border. Click on that swatch. I'm going to make it 100% blue. Again, make sure those other two colors are at zero. Then I'm going to turn that group off. And what we're going to do is going to come down to our main layer there. And instead of selecting the clone that we used, we're going to select the entire masks group like that. And we're going to select blue for the source channel. And you can see that's picked up our blue border very nicely. Then though, we need to reinstate the text. So to do that, we're going to add another image mask to this layer. And we're going to go and look for that text source and drag it into the source world there. And now we're back to where we were. So we've added back in the text and that now enables us to scale 
the masks group without affecting the text. So I'm going to set that to 110% like that. And then we can publish that and we can call that box scale. While we're at it, let's also publish that border width. So it's come to clone border main. And this width here is the one we want to worry about. So I say, let's actually, let's set that default down to 40 and let's publish that. Come back to our project here and we can call that border width. And there's just one other option I think is probably quite useful to have, and that's the ability to add back in the text over the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to that text group and turn it back on again. And you can see now that we've got our text sitting over the top like that. And all we really need to do is we need to publish the opacity of that group. So publish, come over here. We can just call that text opacity. I think personally I would leave it off but you might, for example, want 50% of it or something like that. Depends. It means you can colorize that if you wanted. Now, before we save this out, there's one crucial thing we need to do, and that's we need to turn off our temporary background image. Otherwise, that's going to be baked in and, and where there'll be no transparency. And we'll always be looking at this beach scene. So remember to turn that off before you save it out and you'll get the default title background element. Okay, so now let's save as, select your category, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this glass XXX because I've done it so many times and I publish. So here we are in Final Cut and here's my glass XXX. Let's drag that on. All the controls appear to be working. We can reduce the border width. We can increase the wherever we're scaling here. We can obviously pick it up, move it around wherever we want. Everything follows along. Don't forget that the box scale, you can open up the X and Y scaling separately. So you could have a, a larger Y scale and a smaller X scale, depending on the look you want. You can actually do some fun stuff by actually turning off some of these elements. So for example, you could turn off the bump for the backing and that's just frosted rather than stippled. Obviously, you could turn all the, the bumps off if we want, but it gives a little bit of just, a, even if you have a very, very small amount, it just makes it look a little bit better. Play with the blurs. We could we could dramatically increase the, the backing blur. And you'll notice how that, because that's smearing the colours out a lot more, it becomes quite a bit more readable. And of course, it goes without saying that all the normal text tools are available. We can change the text like that. We can change the font and so on. So lots of things you can do. Hope you have fun with playing with this. Thanks for watching.